Hi there, and welcome to this video on the dentistry interview, focusing on the first GDC principle of putting patients first. I'm Alice from Dentist Mind, where we go through the important topics of the dentistry interviews. Whichever university you're applying for, MMI or panel, we've got you covered. If you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button. Whilst you're watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything. We've got helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you. The following video is a free sample of our full interview course, which you can buy by clicking on the link below in the description. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson four of Dentistry Ethics. This time we're looking at the first General Dental Council principle, which is putting patients first. So the principle of putting patients first is broken down into several subcategories. The first of these is listening to your patients. So dentists should take the time to communicate well with patients and understand how they feel about the treatment and make sure that they understand what it is you're offering them as well. The second point is to treat every patient with dignity and respect. So just because you might not be friends with a patient in an out of practice scenario, doesn't mean you can be rude to them in practice. Every single patient should be treated fairly and respectfully as they are your patient and you're providing a professional service to them. The third one is to act with honesty and integrity. So never hide anything from your patient. If something goes wrong, that happens and you have to be honest about it. You can't just hide a mistake and hope no one will notice. Honesty is so important when communicating with patients. The fourth point is to take a holistic and preventative approach to patient care. So it's not about, okay, this patient needs a filling, we'll just do that and then we'll send them away. It's about looking at the patient's mouth as a whole and how you can do your best to manage their oral hygiene, the condition of their teeth, and give an overall holistic approach to their treatment. So you're not just focusing on one area, you're trying to maintain their oral health as a whole. And the fifth point that it's broken down into is to treat patients in a hygienic and safe environment. So this is things like um, adequately sterilising all of the equipment, cleaning down between patients, and this helps to put patients in a clean environment which doesn't put them at risk of cross-infection. Again, putting patients' interests first because it's not putting them at risk. So continuing from that slide, these are some more points that the principle of putting patients first is broken down into. So you've got treating patients fairly um, without individual discrimination between different patients. And this is things like not discriminating on race, on gender, anything like this, any protected characteristics cannot be discriminated against. You must also put patients' interests first before your own or your practice or organisation. For example, you're not going to suggest a treatment to a patient which will make you loads of money but isn't best for them. It's always got to be the treatment that's best for the patient. It's also about having appropriate um, arrangements for patients to seek compensation if they wish to. So this is also linked to another principle, which is having a clear and effective complaints procedure. This means that if a patient wants to make a complaint and wants to seek compensation because they believe they've come to harm from a treatment that the dentist has provided, there needs to be the ability for them to do this. And the final point that it's broken down into is to find out about laws and regulations which affect your work. So this is things like being registered with the General Dental Council. And throughout all of these points, if a dentist follows them, it's putting patients' interests first, which is what this principle is all about. So here we have an example of something that you might get asked in one of your interviews. For example, this could be an MMI station. So this scenario is about a 63-year-old man who is a lifetime smoker and a 23-year-old pregnant woman. They both want a dental implant, but there's only one available. So who should get it? If you want to pause the video now and have a bit of time to think about this. So an example situation, if it is in your interview, you might get given this scenario, given a minute to think about it, and then five minutes to discuss your answer with the examiner. So on this slide, we have a model answer for the question which you might get asked in your interviews. If you want to take the time to read it, just pause the video and read through it in your own time. But overall, this answer has considered the benefits and drawbacks of giving the implant to each patient. So they've talked about how you can't just say no because the person's a smoker because the NHS was there to give um, medical and dental treatment to everybody. 
Um, despite this, they've acknowledged that a lot of time and resources would have to go into helping a smoker or providing a smoker with an implant because smoking is something that would cause a lot of risk to giving an implant in terms of the longevity of it um, and also the risks associated with the procedure. So this person in their answer has suggested in the long term um, they educate more about lifestyle choices rather than um, just pointing the finger at the smoker and saying okay you can't have it because you've smoked. Um, they're more considering the different factors which influence the answer which is something the interviewer is really going to be looking for. They don't want you to say okay smokers shouldn't have it because they've smoked. They want you to consider both the pros and cons both sides and give a really balanced answer which is what you should always do if you get asked a question regarding an ethical scenario. So in this situation you might say okay they're a smoker and they will then for, therefore take a bit more time to be ready to have an implant so if you educate them about improving their lifestyle making them a more suitable candidate for having an implant then this is something that is might be considered um, and therefore you could then offer them an implant further down the line when it's more likely to be a better procedure for someone who has given up smoking as opposed to someone who's currently a smoker. So that was lesson four and lesson four is now complete. That was talking about the first general dental council principle of putting patients first and in the next few tutorials we're going to go over the rest of the general dental council principles. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe by clicking below and please leave a comment. Click here to continue watching our interview series and to unlock full access to 70 tutorials covering core interview topics, MMI mocks, top tips and more, click on the link in the description below.